In this video, we are going to cover the important systems that supply ATP to the cells of the body. Each of the systems either require oxygen or do not. The ones that need oxygen are called aerobic and the ones that don't need oxygen are called anaerobic. The systems we are going to cover are the phosphocreatine system, glycolysis, beta oxidation, the Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain. Here's a diagram of how each system lies on the spectrum of being anaerobic and aerobic. Note that the phosphocreatine system is completely anaerobic. Also note that the oxygen system, as your book will say, contains the three separate systems, beta oxidation, Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain. For glycolysis, almost all of the steps are anaerobic. However, as we will go on to explain, the final step of glycolysis can change depending on the presence or absence of oxygen. If no oxygen is present, the product of the glycolysis will be lactic acid. If oxygen is present, the product of glycolysis will be prepped to be the starting products of the Krebs cycle. The phosphocreatine system is a readily available source of energy that only occurs within the first 6 to 10 seconds of intense exercise. The molecule phosphocreatine awaits in the cytosol to convert ADP into ATP by giving up its phosphate. The amount of phosphocreatine available depends on diet and explains the fluctuation of the 6 to 10 seconds. A diet that is rich in meat will give an ample supply of phosphocreatine. There are also dietary supplements available to increase phosphocreatine in the body, but there is open debate on how effective those can be. Glycolysis is one of the most important systems that we will cover. It is the breaking down of glucose or any other carbohydrate that is readily available in the cytosol into pyruvate. Pyruvate will then be changed into a final molecule that can differ depending on the presence of oxygen. Note that the process from glucose to pyruvate is completely and always anaerobic and produces the same amounts of ATP regardless of the presence of oxygen. However, what pyruvate is changed into afterward will depend on whether there is oxygen or not. If there is no oxygen present, pyruvate will be converted into lactic acid. This is why glycolysis is sometimes called the lactic acid system. On the other hand, if oxygen is present, pyruvate will be converted into a molecule called acetyl-coenzyme A, or acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is one of the starting molecules of the Krebs cycle. The other starting molecule of the Krebs cycle is oxaloacetate, which is the third molecule that pyruvate can turn into and does so as needed. Note that the book that you're reading may refer to two different types of glycolysis, aerobic and anaerobic, which are referring to the two different outcomes after pyruvate is converted during the final step. Beta oxidation is the preparation of free fatty acids into acetyl-CoA. We won't cover this process right away, but it's important to note that unlike glycolysis, it only produces acetyl-CoA and not oxaloacetate. Since these two molecules are crucial for the Krebs cycle to begin and keep going, glycolysis always has to be happening alongside beta-oxidation. The Krebs cycle is a perpetual chain of reactions that converts one molecule into another, into another, until it turns back into one of the starting molecules. The starting important molecules are acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate. Once they join to become citric acid, the reaction goes through a series of steps that require oxygen to move forward until the final step of the production of another oxaloacetate. Each step within the Krebs cycle will be covered in later videos that will include the products, substrates, and enzymes. For now, we will just discuss the most important products that the Krebs cycle makes a lot of, and that is NADH and H+, as well as FADH2. These molecules are important to the electron transport chain for creating large amounts of ATP. The electron transport chain is the final step of the oxygen process and occurs within the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. The molecules this process needs are the NADH H+, and FADH2 molecules from the Krebs cycle and glycolysis. The details of this process will be covered in later videos, 
just know for now that it cannot function without oxygen, that it cannot function without the products of the Krebs cycle and glycolysis, and that it produces the largest amount of ATP per glucose molecule compared to the other systems, and therefore is the most efficient process. What you will need to know for the next class is the general purpose of each of these energy systems, the starting and ending products of each system, and whether or not a system requires oxygen. And just to recap, the phosphocreatine system is completely anaerobic. Glycolysis is completely anaerobic, but its products can be used for aerobic systems. And beta oxidation, the Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain all require oxygen to happen. In later videos, we will cover each system's total ATP, NADH, and H+, and FADH productions, the different important enzymes related to each reaction, important vitamins and minerals that are used as coenzymes during some reactions, as well as how specifically each of the three macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, are metabolized through each system.